Hi, I'm Dr. Raj Kirit. I'm from Celesty Skin Laser and Hair Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about acne problems or pimple problems. See, acne is called as acne vulgaris when it happens commonly for all the people. So usually this is seen in adolescents, especially above the age of 12 years and can go on up to the age of 28 years as well. This can have an equal proportion of affliction in both male and female, that is male is to female ratio is 1 is to 1. And this happens because as a disorder of sebaceous glands, just beside, which are residing beside the follicles. So these follicular sebaceous glands, cause of the stimulation of the androgen receptors, which are there and the circulating androgens stimulate them, there is widespread activation of this sebocyte axis because of the androgens, circulating androgens. So because of that, the sebaceous glands become more active and secrete more sebum. And once the sebum is increased, there is a bacteria called as Propenobacterium acnes, which is the causative factor for the pimples as well, that is the acne vulgaris. So what happens, this Propenobacterium acnes, this is an anaerobic bacteria, which occludes the hair follicle and increases its population because of the increasing sebum. So the sebum increase will cause more number of Propenobacterium acnes and thereby the Propenobacterium acnes can plug the hair follicles there. Also meanwhile, what happens, the epithelium around the follicular structure, this becomes more keratinized and more number of cells can also be replicated. With this, there is a conglomeration and a combination of these factors which occlude the hair follicle more severely. With that, the follicular sebaceous glands increase in size and at one side it will rupture. And once it ruptures, what happens? There is an inflammation which is set in. So once this inflammation is set in, there is lot of macrophages and lymphocytes which are invited and attracted to that site and thereby the inflammation cascade is started and we see a more larger or diffuse inflammation. So why I am telling you this pathogenesis? How is it related to the clinical features? Now coming to the clinical features, how is this related to the pathogenesis? Now when I said the follicular sebaceous glands become more active because of circulating antigens, there is a sebum increase. When it gets occluded, that is when the comedone forms. This comedone is a micropapular structure which forms just above the skin surface. Now once this follicular sebaceous gland is obstructed and causing a comedone, then the Propenobacterium acnes enter and that is when the pustule or the papule free comes. And that is when the papule is there, the Propenobacterium acne becomes more florid and then a pustule happens. Now once this pus is getting accumulated over there and the epithelium is ruptured and those pustular contents are released into the dermis, then what will happen? The inflammation is all set in. When the pustule is opened up into the dermis, what happens is that there is a pustule which becomes an abscess kind of a thing. And when the inflammations come in, there is a nodular abscess which is forming over there, cyst can form and all these things can happen. Steps of pathogenesis of acne is very important to understand the clinical features of acne presentation. Usually what we presume as usual doctors who with basic knowledge of dermatology, they presume that the comedones, the papules, these are all not the manifestations of acne. They only think the red bumps are the manifestations of acne. That is not the case. Comedones are the hallmark of acne, vulgaris, and then of course the papules are indicative of it. Pustules are the third stage, nodules are the fourth stage, and cysts are the last stage. So to prevent these kind of progressions, one has to understand that the circulating antigens have to be managed, especially by lifestyle changes or exercises or the proper diet habits. And of course, once we come to the pathology of sebocyte and comedones, then we have to understand we can start them on comedone creams that is the retinoid gels, retinoid creams. So these retinoic acid creams are isomers of vitamin A. So because of these vitamin A isomers, the comedones are lysed and thereby the sebum secretions are openly released out. Once they are released out, there are less chances of Propenobacterium acnes coming and harboring there. That is the reason the retinoic acid gels or the vitamin A isomers these are used for the uh, topical applications. Then of course when you come to papules then we can also add other kind of topical medications such as benzoyl peroxide. Also we can use azelic acid and also we can use clindamycin because the antibiotic comes into play 
then the propionobacterium acne as the bacteria is proliferating over there. So, these kind of antibiotic creams or benzoyl peroxide which is an irritant that can also can be a helpful condition and azelic acid is bacteriostatic properties are there. So, that is the reason we use this. Now, when we come to the pustular or nodular or cystic uh, eruptions, then we choose the oral medications. What are the options that we have in oral medications? One is the trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole combination medications and then of course, the other ones are the basic antibiotics which are the macrolide antibiotics that is azithromycin 500 milligrams and of course, the usual tetracycline group of drugs which are very effective on propionobacterium acne that is the tetracyclines, doxycycline, minocycline or linocycline which is a newer molecule. And of course, there is one interesting molecule that is the retinoic acid which is the isotretinoin molecule which is an isomer of the vitamin A. So, this, these are the options what are available for the medical treatments of acne. Now, after these medications, people still want more amount of results. For that reason, we use chemical peels, lasers and other, uh, other procedures out of which the most commonest procedure is the chemical peels. That is the glycolic acid peel and then of course, the salicylic acid peels and the mandelic acid peels. All these kind of peels are available. What are peels? These are the chemically controlled damage causing substances which are usually in a titrated concentrations which can be applied on the skin and can be washed away in a due course of time in a set duration that is 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes depending on the pH or pKa or the substance carrying, the vehicle substance carrying these gels. So, these ones are very very effective and they can give booster treatment options for the dermatologist as well as for the patients. Now, coming to the other laser options such as the carbon laser peel. Now, these carbon laser peels and other ones, what happens is that IPL lasers, what happens is that they reduce the sebaceous activity, they reduce the propionobacterium acne count. Also, the keratinization epithelium is also regularized with this carbon laser peel as well. So, with this QC lasers and IPL lasers and chemical peels, there are a lot of armamentarium for the dermatologists to give better results for the patients. So, this is what we wanted to elaborate today. The next topic will come again with an interesting topic. Thank you, Dr. Rajkiran. Bye-bye.